Uh, well, welcome everybody and thank you so much for joining us. We are uh, delighted that you're able to uh, make it tonight. And again, we certainly apologize that there were a couple of glitches last night that prevented some folks from joining. So uh, we're delighted to have the opportunity to address you here tonight. Um, as we begin, I'm just gonna take a moment and, and open with prayer. So if we could put ourselves in the presence of God and we begin as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Loving God, we come to you today asking for your guidance, your wisdom and support as we begin this school year. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace as we navigate this pandemic that has challenged us to achieve higher levels of adaptability and resilience. Help us to support one another during these times and to be mindful of those among us who have suffered loss and hardship. Guide us in the days, the weeks, the months ahead so that all of our efforts will tend to the benefit of our students and the fulfillment of our mission. We thank you for the blessings you've given to our community and for the hope of a very bright future. We make this prayer as always in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be able to uh, spend this time with you all tonight. Uh, and welcome to Bishop Alamany High School. Uh, the purpose of tonight's meeting is largely to introduce you all to our new principal, Mr. Rafael Rocky Domingo. And uh, so I'm gonna turn it over to him in just a moment. Uh, I just wanna do a, a brief introduction for him. I'm sure many of you read the, the introduction we posted on the website, and some of you have probably even at this point had the opportunity to meet him in person. Uh, but we are delighted that he's, uh, joined our community. He's hit the ground running, and this is a, a very disadvantageous time to start in a leadership role in a new institution, as I'm sure you can all appreciate. And uh, Mr. Domingo has done so with, with vigor and with energy and enthusiasm, and has immediately become a really critical part of our, of our institution. Uh, he's no stranger to Catholic high schools. He spent um, 10 years at our uh, counterpart, Bishop Amat High School, as chair of the religion department, as the coordinator of their international baccalaureate program, uh, as member of a number of school accreditation teams, and as a leader of several school accreditation teams. And for the last decade, he served in leadership roles as a principal, both at Blessed Sacrament School in Hollywood, and subsequently St. Andrew's School in Pasadena. One of the things that was such a big part of our process, we had several good candidates, and one of the big things was, was deep and meaningful reference checking and we were really blown away by the references that we got on Mr. Domingo when we sort of called his people that he had worked with, people that he had worked for in the past. Uh, there is, he has a great reputation and he's somebody who has a long list of accomplishments in Catholic schools. So uh, on behalf of the faculty and staff and administration, uh, we welcome him to the community and we're delighted tonight to introduce him to you. So I am going to pass the microphone over to Mr. Domingo and let him uh, talk a little bit about himself and his vision for the academic life of the school and uh, the community and uh, then begin to uh, into a discussion with you and take your questions. So thanks, Mr. Domingo, the floor is yours. Thanks, Dr. Hamilton, I really appreciate it. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome again. And again, I wanna apologize uh, for any conveniences that you might've had in trying to reach us yesterday. Um, but hopefully then we'll be able to answer all your questions today. And we wanna thank you again for being part of our, um, our call to today. Just a little bit about myself. Um, I have, um, Kathleen and I have two sons. Um, Joseph is a senior at LaSalle High School, and I have a third grader, um, Owen, who will be um, starting school at uh, St. Uh, Elizabeth over in Altadena. Um, I've been blessed to be a product of Catholic education. Um, I've been um, uh, seeing Catholic education all the way from pre-K to elementary school, to high school, to college, uh, graduate school, and even seminary, um, either as a student, a teacher, or as an administrator. And in all those times, I I have seen the, the blessings that Catholic education provides, not only individuals, but families and communities as well. So I'm very pleased and, and very honored uh, to be part of uh, the Bishop Alamany community. And in the short time I'm here, I'm just um, very blown away and also um, excited to be working with such dedicated professionals who truly value Catholic education, um, not only for our community and also for our, for our families and also for our, our students as well too. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge and thank uh, Mr. Sithi, um, who is helping moderate our, our discussion tonight. Um, and he will be able to field some questions regarding EdTech as well. 
Um, but then at this time, I'd like to show the agenda. Mr. Sithi, if you could do that. Great, and then um, next one, next slide. So we're, most of the bulk of my presentation or talk tonight will be um, your question and answers. I'd like to be able to um, engage you in a way that uh, you have, I'm sure you have questions, lots of questions, especially for incoming freshmen and families coming in. Know that um, all the teachers, faculty and staff, Dr. Hamilton and myself are aching to see our students, to see you um, on our campus as soon as possible. And part of my discussion today, we'll be talking a little bit about how we try to ensure the student success, um, both through remote distance learning, as well as through the in-person hybrid um, when we return um, on campus. Um, uh, next slide then, please, uh, Mr. Sidney, thanks. So I want to let you know that um, moving forward, um, one of the things that we have heard from our community, from our parent association board and faculty and staff is that, um, the idea then is structure. Um, a couple months ago, we transitioned into a remote distance learning, um, and then we um, did it very well, but there are certain things that we want to improve upon um, moving forward. Um, one of the things that we will be doing is that a schedule is, is posted. Um, it'll be uh, synchronous teaching throughout, um, and at the very beginning, it'll be through Zoom, um, and we hope to be able to transition to Teams um, later on, but then that is a, a process that and we want to make sure that our students and teachers um, have fully um, comfortable with before we make that transition. So in the very beginning, we'll be doing through Zoom. Um, the teachers will keep in, in line with the schedule and the schedules are posted on our website. Um, and then they will keep in, in, into that schedule. So period one, period two, and period three, um, all those classes will be, will be live streamed, uh, will, be, will be taught on Zoom. And then when we do return in-person hybrid, we will be doing it live stream. So all our all our classrooms will be fitted with, with, with cameras so that students um, who will be part of the week will be at home and the other part will be in school. Um, those students that are um, at home will be able to interact with their students, with, I mean, with their, with their teachers and their classmates uh, in real time. Um, tutoring times are also optional on the very bottom, as you, you notice on the schedule, they're optional for the students, except for those students that are taking honors and advanced placement courses. We recognize that there are, there's a lot of material um, that teachers want to be able to cover to make sure that our students are successful and they also um, will be um, successful in, in learning the material, but also being able to understand the material. And so that half hour at the, as, as, as time in the afternoon will be mandatory for those, for those students who are taking honors and advanced placement. One of the things that we've also learned and heard from, from our faculty and from our parents is that We'd like to make the structure more defined, but also the environment more defined for our students as well, so that a dress code policy will be strictly enforced. We're asking then that all students that come to class um, remotely be in an Alamany t-shirt or polo shirt or an Alamany sweatshirt. Um, again, for incoming freshmen, we realize that most of you might not have uh, the uniform yet, and, and we'll, we can talk about that, but then um, there'll be a grace period um, and we'll let you know when that uh, when 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 the dress policy will be will be enforced. Um, but again, it's again putting the mindset of the student um, away from home and now that they are in school, um, and then just give them that uh, additional support um, and letting them know that this is something different, um, that they're coming to school and that they're act that, that they will be in school and they have responsibilities um, in school as well too. And we want to be able to support that. And part of that is being able to dress the part or at least putting on their uniforms to be part of the community as well. Um, in our remote distance learning, you can also notice that the schedule for Wednesday is a minimum day, but we wanna make it intentional in the sense that there are activities that will be planned on Wednesday afternoon, whether it be through ASB or um, through campus ministry or mass or clubs, those, those, um, those activities will be, helping, will be helpful um, for students to interact with another remotely. And although that we are uh, distant, uh, but we're not going to be socially distant as well, so that we hopefully then can build community um, through those activities. Uh, next slide. Uh, thanks. So in terms of when students come back, um, classrooms are right now are being readied uh, for us to be able to come back um, hopefully soon. Um, but in the meantime, um, the classroom will be optimized to hold at least 16 students 
and the, there'll be clearly marked spaces for teachers as well as for students. Uh, temper checks will be conducted for anyone and everyone arriving on campus. Uh, masks will be required um, and students must bring their mask on campus. Hand sanitation stations will be promptly located throughout campus. And then outside eating areas will be reconfigured so that the lunch areas can accommodate uh, social distancing protocols as well as public health guidelines. Um, when we do come back um, in an in-person hybrid, um, the students will be, half the students will be on campus and the other half will be, will be remotely. So students will be going to school two days out of the week, but uh, five days out of the week, two days in, in person and then three days um, to remotely. Uh, next slide. <laughs> Thanks. Um, expectations then for students and, and adding to that structure. Um, is that attendance will be taken at, at, at the beginning of every period um, and attendance is required for, for students both um, online and in person as, as, as school happens. Um, and then there'll be marked an absence online is considered an absence as an in person. Uh, students will be marked absent if they arrive 20 minutes after class begins. Um, but the, we hopefully then does not dissuade the student from coming in in minute 21 or minute 22 or minute 25. It really is very important for the students to be able to be at um, to be a class as much as they can uh, in order to have as much um, time with the teachers in their classrooms and recognize that's important. Um, so even if they come 20 minutes late, they'll be at like absent. Um, there is a, a still a, <clears throat> a value for them to being there, both from the teacher side um, as well as for them to be participating um, in the classroom. Um, three tardies will equal an absence, and 12 absence will result and a student not receiving credit for the class. Parents are still expected to contact the school if their student will be absent, either remotely or on person. And in addition to expectations that we have uh, for being an Alamany student and being part of our community, students will also um, be expected to uh, abide uh, with all the public health guidelines and social distancing protocols established by schools. So that students will still um, we'll have to be wearing masks. Um, they'll still have to social distances. Um, and then we'll, we will provide that support and help for them. Um, but we were asking for your help in making sure that students just abide by those. For the safety of not themselves, but also uh, for our faculty and staff, but also for our, all our families and our community uh, to make sure that we um, ensure or the safety of, of everyone in our community as much as possible. Uh, next slide, uh, Mr. Sithi. Um, many of my questions yesterday were dealt with athletics. I just wanted to give you an update in terms of what that looks like. Um, the safety of our student athletes and coaches is, uh, is, is our top priority. Um, the traditional format for the sports will still follow. Uh, there'll be a fall, a winter, and spring season. Um, but those seasons have been abbreviated to only 72 days. Some sports have uh, longer uh, days uh, than 72 and some have shorter. Um, but in terms of meeting this epidemic and meeting this, uh, meeting this pandemic, um, all the all the all the sports seasons will be will be will be will be condensed to 72 days. Uh, temperature checks and screening will be taken prior to each practice. Um, practices will resume with social distancing protocols on Tuesday, September 8th, so the day after. Um, Labor Day um, practices will be resuming. Um, I will be having um, meetings with the head coaches as with Mr. Erbach, our athletic director, um, and then talking about how we go forward. Um, we teams will still be practicing um, in the in the fall in August, September, October, November, um, and then those are called with summertime rules will be extended, which means that you know for CIF um, the um, uh, social distancing in phase one um, is still in play. And so we will make sure that our teams were able to practice. Um, it adds some sense of normalcy to our students and to our community, seeing students back on campus and doing what they enjoy and doing what they love. Um, but then we also want to be mindful and, and be safe and make sure that they are safe when, when they are on campus. Um, just to make a note of it, um, there will be an athletic department parent Zoom call with Mr. Urbach and myself on September uh, 12th at 6 p.m. And you're all invited to attend and we will give you more updates um, in terms of the athletic programs uh, with what's going on um, in the following months. Uh, next slide, Mr. Sithi. Um, August 11th is a minimum day. Um, you will be receiving uh, the, your invitation to um, uh, for the orientation day via Zoom. It'll be all done remotely through Zoom. 
on uh, this Sunday at August 9th, uh, you'll receive an email with your students' uh, class schedule uh, for, the, for the following year. Um, and then part of that will be um, making sure that you know how to get on Canvas. And Canvas is our student management service. It's where we, uh, where our teachers will post their syllabi, and they will post their agendas for the week. Um, they will also um, host and post their homework assignments, and also assignments will be turned in through Canvas as well uh, on that. And so part of that day will be uh, making sure that your students uh, feel comfortable um, in moving forward with Canvas. And then part of that day will also be meeting a lot of our um, support um, personnel um, for, uh, for the school. So we're very blessed to have a chaplain on campus, Father Michael Setsi. This is gonna be his, uh, his third year with us. Uh, Mr. James Rubidal will be our campus minister. Uh, Ms. Maria White is director of counseling. Uh, Ms. Katie Fama is our ASB moderator. Uh, Ms. Angela Urbach and Mr. Brigham Harwell will be our, our student deans. And then Mr. Dave Urbach will be as our athletic director. And then the rest of the day, or in the latter half of that day, which is a minimum day, is that you will be meeting, uh, your students will be meeting um, their teachers on, on a modified block schedule. So they will be meeting with all their teachers for about five to 10 minutes, um, and then they'll rotate and go to the next teacher. I'll give them an opportunity to meet the teacher and for the teacher to meet them, um, and also go a little bit above, above, again, review again what Canvas and how to, and how to use Canvas um, uh, to, to, be, to be successful. Um, in, in their classrooms. Uh, next slide, Mr. Sithi. <clears throat> At this time, I'd like to open it up for questions. Um, anything that, that um, I, could, I could help um, clarify, or if you have any questions about school or opening school, I'm happy to answer for you. Any personal questions or specific inquiries about students or families <clears throat> should be directed uh, to me at, on my email. Um, please feel free to email me and I'm happy to answer it. Or, or if you'd like to schedule an appointment with me, I'm happy to meet you as well. Uh, please email Mrs. DeSantiago um, and the email address is there and I'm happy to schedule an appointment to, to meet with you um, regarding your personal concerns. Mrs. Um, Sithi, it's all yours. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you so much. Um, please, uh, everybody, uh, type in your questions in the chat. Um, also, just so you know that this uh, PowerPoint is um, gonna be available uh, where you found the link, uh, so you'll have access to this information. Um, all righty, so our first question here is, uh, could you repeat what the schedule would look like when we return to hybrid? And I could, I could you want me to share that screen? Yeah, that'd be great, Mr. Sithi. Yeah, but let's do that. Okay, so this is the distance learning schedule, but I think the question was about the hybrid schedule. Yes, so I think, the, so the, this information is found on our website. Um, if you could walk them through that, Mr. Sure, and not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we just go to alme.org and these are the drop downs and under student life, there are both schedules posted here. Uh, so if you click on hybrid learning, it will take you to this. Okay. And so this is when we come back to school. I think the question was what, what happens during, for the remote distance. Is that correct? Uh, the question is, could you repeat what the schedule will look like when we return to the hybrid? Oh, sure, I, I apologize. So uh, for the hybrid schedule, for in-person hybrid, we are going to do a block schedule. Um, so as you can tell, uh, Monday and Tuesdays are blocks one, two, and three, and we've divided the school into um, cardinal and gold, our, our school colors. Um, so half the school or half the students will be at home, and then the other half will be um, tuning into class uh, remotely through, uh, on Zoom or on Teams. And those classes that are being, that the teachers will be teaching their classes will be live streamed and students at home will be able to interact with their, with their teachers and with their classmates uh, in real time. Um, the block schedule is the zero period, which won't begin for another couple of weeks after school begins. Um, we will have a check-in process. So part of the process is that everyone will have the temperature checks. Right now we're gonna be using alumni hall and the gym um, to check in so then we can um, make sure that we maximize the space, but also social distancing. Um, and students um, that have their temperature checks um, um, will be allowed in. Um, we'll have some kind of system making sure that um, they have been, they've been checked. Um, so even if they arrive late on campus, they'll have some kind of identification. I think we're looking at wristbands, uh, being able to put those wristbands on them and so that they can, uh, they can go into class uh, safely knowing that they've been checked. 
Um, the block schedules are for an hour and a half um, each. Um, and then the tutoring sessions at uh, 2.30 to 3 will be optional. Um, those classes that have the AP and the honors classes are already built in, so it'll be 90 minute schedule block days. So that's the schedule that we come back in. On Wednesday, as you, as you can notice, it's, it's a great day. It's a minimum day. Um, but then those days on Wednesday, uh, again, we will be having, um, we will be intentional in trying to build community with our students. Um, ASB will be hosting some activities. We will, might have a campus uh, school-wide mass. Campus ministry might be doing something. Um, we might have faculty meetings, which the students will be excused from. But Wednesday, we will have activities in the afternoon to, to make sure that we are uh, building community as best as we can with our students and with our teachers together. Great. Um, the next question is, when is the first day of high school for a freshman? Sure. So first day of high school for a freshman is going to be on Tuesday, August 10th, August 11th. And that will be on their orient orientation day. And that will be a minimum day. Uh, great. The next question is, what happens when a child is found to have a fever? So in the temperature check, um, one of the things that we're asking parents to do is pre-screen their students uh, before they arrive on campus. Simply just ask them how they feel. Are they feeling good? Um, are they, do they have any, any aches? Um, things that you would normally go through um, and ask your child how they're feeling. Um, if a student comes to campus and they are presented with a fever, um, they will not be allowed to come into, um, into, uh, into the classrooms. Uh, we will hold them. Um, and then we will ask the parents to, to come and, and, and pick up their child. Um, if the child gets sick uh, during the day, um, we do have uh, an infirmary set up. Um, it'll be uh, well ventilated. We'll have some cots there and it'll be separated with uh, clear um, uh, shields or uh, barriers um, so that students um, that are sick will not be uh, Cross-contaminated and won't be uh, won't be in, will be in close proximity with each other, um, but they'll be in one room with, with good ventilation, and then they'll be supervised, and we will call parents to pick them up uh, as soon as possible. Next question is: Will the students be required to dress up for church days? Uh, no. So right now we are asking students to wear their their, their Bishop Alamany polo or a sweatshirt. Um, that is uh, that we are not asking them to wear their formal uniforms on mass days. That ties They're in. more than welcome to, but, but, but not necessary. <laughs> no pun intended, but that ties into uh, the next question. Do the students <laughs> need to wear their uniforms? Uh, I'm sorry, what? I'm uh, sorry, the question was just, uh, do the students need to wear their uniforms? The students, oh yeah, so uh, during class time, uh, students are asked to have their cameras on um, so that students, so the teachers can see that the students um, have their, their Bishop Alamany polo on. One, again, I want to stress, um, what, why that is important for us, not only trying to build community, but also giving structure to the day for the students, and that this is, uh, this is school. And putting on their uniform will help them um, find that structure, uh, and, hopefully, and, 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 and that structure will help them succeed um, and thrive um, in this remote distance learning. Uh, and so um, we will have a used a uniform, gently used uniform sale uh, this Thursday and Friday. It's sponsored by the theater department on all proceeds will, will benefit the theater uh, department. And you are more than welcome to come on campus to buy uh, gently used uh, uniforms, um, bottoms and tops as well. <laughs> uh, next question is when can students pick up books? Uh, Mr. City, you want to talk about that in terms of most of it will be electronic? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, so regarding books, the vast majority of books are going to be um, digital ebooks like iBooks, um, and teachers will have those uh, the book list uh, along with links in their syllabi when their courses are published. So um, they'll be doing it all digitally. A student will open up the Canvas course, go to the syllabus, um, and look for where the books are located. And this is easy, just tapping on it, and it will take you to the page to purchase. Uh, the books. Um, and it depends on the class. Uh, you know, each class will have different books that are necessary. Um, next question is, so they will be attending every day? That is correct. Ma uh, class will be every day. Um, begins at 8.30. Um, and then um, classes will be resuming um, at, either in person or, or, on, or online. But in, in the, in the, when we first begin school, it will be all remote. How do we find out who our child's counselor is? 
Uh, that'll be included in the August 9th uh, email where you will be receiving your child's um, class schedule for the year. Um, also Zoom instructions on how to log in to the orientation day on Tuesday, um, as well as your child's counselor. Uh, this person's uh, wanting some clarification. They said August 11th is student orientation. Will Wednesday, August 12th be a one to six schedule? Uh, August 12th will be, uh, a f uh, will be a minimum day and it'll be for, that'll be, um, yes, it'll be all, all the students will be coming back to school that day. Next question is, uh, if we know that our student will be missing days in advance at school, will he be excused or marked as absent? Um, so the student will be marked absent. Uh, they're, uh, it's just a matter then of calling the, 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 the school and then notifying us. But it's also very important then to notify your teachers as well, um, because then if they're missing extended long period of, of days, um, we want to make sure that they are, uh, are not missing too much of the materials and they can at least have the materials ready for them. Um, and then that's something that you would discuss uh, individually with, with the teachers and making sure that that happens. But we are still asking um, that uh, students or parents call in uh, to the school to make when, when students will be absent. Uh, next question is, my son would like to know if the types of mask matters. Are they able to wear masks with designs or words? Yes, they are. I mean, uh, as long as the uh, words are and uh, comply with our, our Catholic school and, and they're nothing offensive, um, uh, certainly they're, they're more than welcome to. And we are also going to be providing, uh, not providing, but we will be selling masks um, with our Bishop Alamany logos. And we encourage students to be able to wear those. I think that school says a lot about our school pride, um, especially when they go um, out in the community that they can, that they can represent that they are part of Bishop Alamany. Great. Um, the next question is, if there are any schedule, uh, class schedule issues on the 11th, should they contact Mrs. White? Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, thank you for the good question. Um, so that first week of school, um, we're still, um, students might be placed in classes that they did not expect to be placed in or are missing classes that they thought they would be in. And so we are, that, that's the best time to be able to make those adjustments and make those uh, class changes or course changes uh, during that first week. But please contact their, uh, their counselor um, right away. Um, this one is a, was a private message sent from Kathy Cruz. I'm going to reply to you um, privately, and I will uh, mention this with Rocky, uh, Principal Domingo, um, after the meeting. So Kathy, just so you know, it will be, um, it will be handled. Thank you for sending the message. Uh, the next question is, when students return back to school, what is the process when a, te when a student or teacher has been identified to be sick? How will we be able to do contract uh, I think contact tracing and ensure students can safely return back to school. Will you be required for students to take the COVID test since many people can be asymptomatic? Sure, um, that is a very good question. There are protocols in place that have been uh, given to us not only from the Department of Catholic Schools and the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, but we are using our guidelines, the guidelines that we're using are directly from public health and from county. Um, and so the protocols are in place. So if a student does uh, test positive, um, there are, we, we, we put in our, our protocols into place and making sure that um, anyone that is in contact with that student has been notified. Um, and then we will put those measures in place in terms of uh, what happens next in terms of uh, quarantining or, or, or um, not allowing the students to come in. And all those, all those things will, will, will follow. But we do have a set of protocols that we will, that have been clearly established and that we will follow all the way through. Um, regarding testing, um, testing again, it's, it's, it's sort of like the, um, uh, it's sort of like the, the balance on your checkbook. Um, you can test it and you can find out what it is right now at that moment. Uh, and so you could, and right happen when you happened, you might be walking down the street or uh, going to the supermarket or, or something else, and then you might be infected. And so that testing is gives us uh, gives us some information. But that testing really, what really is most important is when students come on campus, is that we take their temperature, um, and that we you you pre-screen them before they come on campus, um, and then you make sure that when they do come on campus, they are healthy, um, they are not sick, um, they don't have you no know, symptoms in terms of coughing or shortness of breath. All of those things are really important. So we're looking towards uh, looking uh, and looking for our parents to help. Uh, manage that uh, before they actually come on campus. Uh, just a heads up for the time, it's 5.33 and we have the meeting at 6 p.m. Uh, so we'll be ending this at about 5.58, I hope you understand, but you're all more than welcome to join the sophomore meeting uh, if you have further questions. 
Um, the next question, are we able to change the block schedule so that family members can be on campus at the same time, especially with families that have two parents working? Sure. So um, siblings um, will be on the same block schedule. Um, uh, Ms. Arnold, our vice principal, and Ms. White uh, are, have worked very diligently to make sure that uh, siblings and families are kept together. Um, if there is an issue with that, uh, please contact, um, after you receive your schedule, uh, please contact uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. White uh, or, or, or Ms. Arnold um, to make sure that, that that's changed. But we are making every um, accommodation as possible to make sure that families are not um, are, put, are still put in the same same are, are still put together in the same block. Um, our next question is: Is the first day of school online or in person? And are students required to have an N95 mask instead of ordinary medical masks? Sure. So the uh, first day of school will be on August 11th, and it will be all remotely. Um, again, social distancing guidelines and the protocol from the state says that we cannot resume school until um, a certain threshold has been made by LA County. Um, and until then, we are still going to be all remote. Um, so in terms of the mask, the mask is just facial coverings. There is no, the N95 is not necessary, although it, it, it's, if, if, it's, if a student has it, then feel free to wear that at all. But the facial covering really is important. Our next question um, is probably for me. Uh, for the students who don't have their iPads set up yet, will the IT department be able to help them? Um, yes. <laughs> so uh, our orientation day, we'll be providing, um, I'll actually be doing a walkthrough of the setup. Um, you'll be receiving some information, some login information, and I'll be walking everybody through accessing Canvas on the desktop, accessing Canvas on your iPad, uh, and that's the same thing with email. Uh, but you know, more importantly, Canvas, how to access your courses and how to join the, join the Zoom sessions for your courses as well. So um, yeah, that will be handled on orientation day. Uh, next question is, uh, when Alamany returns uh, to in-class, will there still be an option for families who do not feel comfortable sending their kids to school to continue remotely? Yes, that, that's that. There, there is an option for families to, um, to opt to not to return to school. Um, that's why we um, outfitted all our classrooms with, um, uh, with cameras. And so that a student, um, whether they choose, um, whether if they choose to stay home during that time of even in-person hybrid, they will still be in, um, in the classroom um, and they can still interact with their classmates and their teachers in real time. Our next question asks, are they splitting the hybrid in-person days by last name so siblings can attend on the same day with less exposure for infection to come home to families? Uh, I, I, could you repeat the question again? Yeah, not a problem. Are they splitting the hybrid in-person days by last name so siblings can attend on the same days for less exposure for infection to come home to families? Sure. So Ms. White, Mrs. White, and uh, Mrs. Arnold, Ms. Arnold, Mrs. Arnold are working very, are working hard in making sure that siblings stay together and families stay together for um, when they are either in the Cardinal or Gold schedule. Uh, the next question is for clarification. Uh, so mm -hmm. August 11th, freshmen log in and have a meet and greet, and all students have first day of school the following day, the 12th. That's correct. And then the families will be receiving um, their student schedules on August 9th with the login information uh, for the uh, Tuesday Zoom and remote orientation day. Uh, next question is uh, very polite. What is the earliest day we can expect our children to return to campus pending all mandates? Thanks for all your diligence. Um, again, um, we want to make sure we if it was up to me, we'd have the students back in, on campus right away. Um, we, we, we miss our students, and we miss our community, and wish that they could be back um, with us. Um, but we really are, are, are we want to be mindful, and, and we want to be make sure that there, our students are safe, as well as faculty. Um, again, those when we can return is really dependent upon um, county health. Um, Dr. Ferrer, in an interview yesterday, said that she was optimistic, cost optimistic in terms of the numbers that have been going down. Um, but uh, they, we need to see a trend or the, the state needs to be able to see a trend um, in COVID cases going down in order for us for schools to be opened up. Um, so hopefully it'll be soon. Uh, we all pray for that. Uh, we all want that. Uh, we're all looking forward to that. Um, but that uh, unfortunately is outside of our, um, outside of our control. Our next question, uh, how will the classrooms be set up to separate the students? Will there be barriers between them, et cetera? How many students will there be per class? Sure. So we are optimizing each classroom to hold 16 students. 
Um, and then the, the seats will be clearly marked as to which, which seats are being used. And then the seats that are not being used will be, remain in the, in, inside the classroom to act as natural barriers. Uh, depending on the orientation of the class, um, the teacher and space and, and the student's spaces will either be between 10 to 12 feet apart um, between the teacher desk and, 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 and the desk itself. Um, the, 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 the student's desk that will be used um, will be six feet apart and then we have measured that and we've gotten the classrooms ready for that as well. And all the teachers um, will have uh, clear barriers on top of their desks so they can still interact with their students, um, but uh, in a very safe way. And all students will be required to wear masks as well as faculty and staff um, at all times when they're on campus. Uh, next question, um, I think this was asked before. I'm not sure if I'm just going up and down, but uh, when Almany returns uh, to in-class, will there be the option for families who do not feel comfortable sending kids to school to continue remotely? Yes, um, we understand that there are uh, a lot of different pressures um, and, and, and for households. Uh, in light of what is going on. So um, families that opt to have their child stay at home, um, even when we do come back for in-person hybrid, um, certainly there's not an issue for that. We will, those accommodations, we are making those accommodations um, in, in light of what's going on. Um, and students that, uh, or families that feel that students should, are better suited to being at home, will so we'll continue um, doing their studies remotely. Um, all our classes will be fitted with cameras, so they'll be live streamed, and they can interact live um, with their classmates and their teachers in real time. Our next question is, when will students receive a list of what supplies they need to have? Mr. Spade, you want to talk about that one? I guess that, that talks about class lists. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so um, our goal uh, when students um, receive their schedules and school begins, they'll be able to log in to their campus accounts. All their classes will be populated. And let's say they have biology, they just click on the biology icon and uh, they go to the syllabus. And in that syllabus, it will have a list of not only the rules and regulations, the books, but also whatever supplies are necessary. So that syllabus that's in Canvas is going to hold all the information. And again, it differs by class, uh, but again, the key is um, it will be posted in Canvas in the syllabus um, per course. Um, I, uh, by the way, I want to, uh, I see Carol Topping uh, here as a participant. She's uh, with our parent association. And I just wanted to remind everyone about the parent association survey. Uh, there's a link for the survey um, it, where you found the link to this uh, meeting. So I'm sure they'd appreciate it if you could go in there and uh, complete the survey for them. And again, I want to also recognize the parent association and help and, and thank them for uh, my welcome um, and to Bishop Alamany uh, family. They've been extremely helpful and uh, and, and their counsel and their guidance and, and, and especially in, and as we navigate and opening, opening campus. Um, one thing again is I want to be able to encourage all our families to join our parent association meetings and they'll be hold, held uh, remotely as, as most things and everything else. Um, right now it's scheduled on the first Tuesday of every month. Um, and the, that information will be on the website. And then uh, uh, we encourage you to be part of that uh, parent association. Uh, it's through that collaboration of both parent and, and, and school. Uh, that we know that we can provide the best quality of education for our students and for our community. So we look forward to seeing you there as well. Next question is, if all students are present and there is no need for the cameras, are you considering to conduct a session outdoors for better ventilation? Yes, so that uh, teachers will have that option to be able to have, um, to have it outside. In fact, it's uh, one of the things that's uh, recommended. Uh, however, but because of the hybrid schedule, um, and then uh, the un unforeseeable future as to when we can have all our students back um, in, in order for it to accommodate those families and accommodate the hybrid schedule really, um, most of the classes will be held indoors um, because the cameras will be fixed um, inside, the ca in inside, inside the classrooms. Right. However, um, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll retract that, but I'll just add on to that. Um, classes that we're meeting together like band, um, we'll be meeting outside um, because of social distancing, but also because of um, uh, they expel um, a lot uh, using their instruments. They will be meeting outside and they'll, they'll be grouped together. Um, and then they will, and so there's no need for a camera because there won't be a student that's not in band um, that'll be part of that A period or part of that other period that stays at home. Our next question is, will the freshmen still be required to perform service hours due to COVID-19? Sure, so thank you. That, Service hours, as well as parent service, uh, service hours and fundraising um, will be suspended until we return back to school. 
And then when we do come back to school in the hybrid setting, they will be prorated depending on the number of months that we have left. Um, so depending when we come back uh, is that will determine the number of parent hours that's required, um, parent uh, service hours for our, for our students and also for the fundraising as well. Our next question is, what about restrooms and other common areas? How often will they be disinfected each day? Sure, so they will be disinfected every day. Um, again, part of that being a minimum day schedule or a schedule is that uh, we will also limit the number of restrooms that are being used um, and that they will be cleaned um, on a daily basis. Um, and then after school, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be cleaned again uh, to make sure they're ready for the next day. And the drinking fountains will no longer be available um, because of the shared, uh, you know, they drink off the drinking drinking fountain. Um, that that will those those will no longer be available. So we're asking students to bring their own water um, for our lunch areas and for our eating areas. Uh, those are also being um, uh, reconfigured to uh, accommodate for social distancing. Um, and then uh, the cafeteria will also be reconfigured as well too uh, for social distancing for students to be able to buy food as well. Uh, and again, shout out to Carol. Thank you for your comments and for all of your assistance. You're awesome. Uh, our next question is- I think that was for you, Mr. City, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you able to let us know how open house parent-teacher conferences will work if schools are still closed? Sure. Um, O open house. Um, we a bulk of that will be um, will be meeting teachers, and so a lot of that will be done remotely. Um, just like your students will sign into um, classes on a daily day, on a daily basis, um, we will be providing logins for parents to be able to log in um, during open house. So uh, the agenda and the schedule has not yet been finalized. But roughly speaking, uh, myself and, and Dr. Hamilton will be speaking and greeting uh, all our families. Um, we'll have some other speakers as well, but the bulk of that day or the bulk of that evening um, will be an opportunity for you to log in and meet your teachers, uh, your student teachers, um, and to interact with them because that is what back to school is all about. Um, Veronica, this isn't a question, but I just want to read it because it's very nice. Uh, she says, thank you so much for having this meeting. We appreciate your efforts and everything you are doing for our children and us stressed parents. We appreciate it. So thank you again and again. Uh, we really are, are uh, as educators, we, we miss um, not having kids in our hallways and to, and to go to work um, in, in an empty building really doesn't make sense to me. Um, so we ache uh, to, to see you and to see our students um, back on campus as soon as possible. Um, and then that's the end of the chat. If I missed anything, please uh, feel free to, to retype it um, right now because um, it looks like uh, we're at the end of, of the questions. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Sithi. Um, again, I want to thank everybody or there's any... Uh, yeah, there's one, um, one question just popped up. Is yeah. there an opportunity as parents to be able to donate any disinfectant supplies or masks, et cetera, to help the teachers? Sure. So being Catholic education for a lot of years. I never say no to anything, uh, especially for donations. <laughs> so uh, feel free to uh, donate uh, disinfectant, anything um, in terms of making sure our students and, and our kids are safe. Uh, no, we welcome anything that you can, can donate to us. We, we really do. We, we much, we're much much appreciated. Uh, where, will we, where will we be able to buy the Alamany masks? Uh, the Alameda masks are being ordered, and so when uh, we will, that part of that information um, right now, we're still waiting on our vendors, um, but it has been ordered, um, but those will be ready uh, for uh, most likely the second week um, when school comes back. And the new question, how soon will the school open if the restrictions are lifted, let's say tomorrow? Sure, so the countdown is when the, lift, when the, count, when the restrictions are lifted, we have 14 days uh, from when we can open. Um, Right now, we're preparing so that when we get the okay, we can open tomorrow. But unfortunately, a county guideline saying that we cannot open, we have to at least give a 14-day window. Um, so we are making the classrooms and, the, and, and our facilities and campus ready as if we're going to open tomorrow. Um, all the cameras are being placed inside the classrooms. Um, you know, we're putting all the social distancing stickers everywhere to, to remind students and faculty members about that. Um, classrooms are being outfitted with uh, stickers where students will be seated and then those desks that are not being used are being X'd or being uh, put tape over it um, and then we're getting those clear barriers inside our teachers classrooms right away. Um, so 
Um, we, we hope to be able to open as soon as possible, but county dictates right now that we have to wait 14 days as soon as, the, as, soon as, as, soon as we're able to, as soon as the order is lifted. Um, I, uh, Kathy sent me a message. Kathy, thank you very much for that. Um, I believe that's it. Um, let's see. Is it thank you from Heidi? Thank you. Thank you for attending. <laughs> all right. Well, then, thank you very much. I really appreciate all your time. Um, and Can I interject for yeah. one moment? I, I don't. I, sorry. I just wanted to clarify on that last point. Um, uh, I, I think I just want to make sure we're, we're precise on that point. And I, I think you. Um, just to be clear, the, when the restriction is actually lifted about us not being able to come back is 14 days after we're off the state's monitoring list. So when the county is off the state's monitoring list for 14 days, uh, that's when the restriction is lifted. And when that happens, we'll come back the next day. We'll come back immediately. So I, I, I just want to be clear that people- Yes, that's correct. Sorry. Thank you, Dr. No, I, yeah. I think you said it right. I think it was just, it, it's kind of a confusing topic. So we, it, the restriction is af actually lifted after the 14 days of us being off the list. But we, I do want to be clear that we will return immediately upon the restriction being lifted. It won't be lifted until we've been off the state's monitoring list for 14 days. So it's kind of a technical point, but I just wanted to make sure people understood that uh, once the restriction is lifted, we will come back immediately. Sorry to interject, but I just thought well, that, that was, was a good. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate you, uh, you making that clarification. I think we're wrapped up, Dr. Hamilton. We have no more questions. Uh, did you want to uh, just wrap it up and say uh, anything? The time is yours. Yeah, again, I just want to say a thank you. Uh, we, we really see this endeavor of Catholic education as a sacred partnership with the parents of our students. You began this process of education with your children. We take incredibly seriously the fact that you have entrusted us to partner with you in their education. We try very, very hard to honor that partnership in everything we do. I feel very strongly that bringing Mr. Domingo on board is a meaningful step in us taking very seriously that charge and that he is ready for this job and we are delighted to have him. Uh, so I just wanna say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Domingo. Thank you to our parent community. We're excited about the year ahead. We will have challenges we will have obstacles, but with our faith, with our goodwill, hard effort, and real partnership with one another, uh, we're confident that this is going to be a really great year for Bishop Alamany High School. So thank you all. Thanks for coming out, and um, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Dr. Hamilton. Again, I want to, again, say express our prayers and for you and your families to make sure that you are safe and that we are looking forward to seeing you back on campus and, and greeting you uh, with a hearty heart sh with a hearty, uh, shake and, and a hug if we could do that as well too when we come back. And so we look forward to seeing you soon, but we'll definitely see you on August 11th um, on, our, on our orientation day. So again, welcome to Bishop Alamany and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.